بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ہوپ یو مسٹ بی ڈوئنگ گڈ ان شاء اللہ اٹس می انجم عقیل ایٹ یور اون چینل انگلش لاؤنڈ وتھ انجم ان ٹوڈیز ویڈیو وی ول بی ڈسکسنگ جان کیٹس اینڈ ہیز موسٹ فیمس ورکس اور پوئمس لیٹ اسٹارٹ وتھ اے شارٹ انٹروڈکشن جان کیٹس بلونگس ٹو دا ینگر جنریشن آف رومینٹک پوئٹری ہی واز دا موسٹ پرفیکٹ Uh, romanticist his poetry differs from others because his poetry is the reflection of his own mind and heart john keats is a poet of sensuousness now question arises here that what is sensuousness sensuousness is a quality in poetry which appeals to all five senses sense of sight smell touch hear taste and gives pleasure and delight A minute observation of John Keats's poetry shows how how he uses images and things of nature presenting sensuousness. John Keats uh, was passionate lover of beauty, beauty in all forms, shapes and varied manifestation. In fact, beauty is the source of joy as he himself says, a thing of beauty is joy forever. It is the love for beauty which introduces the element of sensuousness in the poet. Matthew Arnold, an English poet and critic, says about sensuousness of Keats that Keats is enchantingly and abundantly sensuous. The poet uh, gives uh, impressions received by their eyes only. Uh, we can take example of Wordsworth. Wordsworth's imagination is tired by what he sees in nature. Likewise, Milton is not inspired by natural beauty in his Paradise Lost. But Keats is the only poet whose poetry appeals to all our five senses. In this regard, uh, we have two living examples in front of us, Ode on a Gratian Urn and Ode to Nightingale. In Ode uh, to Gratian Urn, Keats caters to our senses by describing pictures made on Gratian Urn. In first stanza, we have the sensuous picture of passionate men and gods. When poet says, in temp or the dales of Urkadi, what men or gods are these, what maiden lath? These lines appeal to, uh, to our sense of sight. Similarly, in the second stanza of uh, poem, Keats is giving description of another picture in splendid manner which appeals to our sense of hearing. These are also very famous lines of this ode. Poet says, Heard melodies are sweet but those unheard are sweeter therefore years of pipes play on. By reading these lines, it seems that we are listening some music keats discussed ethics of beauty and imagination and presented imagery in front of us in graceful manner comparatively ode to the nightingale is also rich in sensuousness where we have abundance of imagery in um, fourth stanza of poem ode to nightingale The poet is presenting fine imagery of Queen Moon on the sky with stars, which appeals to our sense of sight. When poet says, And happily the Queen Moon is on her throne, clustered around by all her starry face. Now we used to start imagine a night view by reading these lines. After that, in stanza fifth, We find another magnificent example of sensuousness. It seems like that a uh, poet is in jungle, surrounded by beautiful flowers and tramping on these flowers in grass. Poet says, I cannot see what flowers are at my feet, nor what soft incense hangs upon the boss. Apart from these beautiful sensuous pictures, 
there is an example of pathetic image of Ruth who is unhappy and sick for home. In stanza 7, we find image of Ruth as Through the sad herd of Ruth went sick for whom She stood in tears amid the alien corn. In the reflection of the above evidences, we can easily conclude that Keats' power as a master of sensu sensuousness is at its highest. No other poet could do so. And our whole body gets involved in imagination by reading his poetry and we use penta senses. I tried to elaborate in front of you all the um, sensuous part of Keats' poetry. That's all from my side. Thank you.